Hi everyone and welcome back to part two of this incredible London townhouse tour. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you around the kitchen, the dining room, the family room, the primary bedroom, the nursery and a children's bedroom. But I'm also gonna be sharing some very exciting news at the end of the video, so make sure you stay tuned for that. I can't wait to show you around these rooms. Let's get started. So we've now come down to the lower ground floor and we are in the kitchen. This room is an example of where we've kept the existing joinery but made some tweaks just to elevate it and keep it in line with the rest of the house. So first of all, we really wanted to create a focal point above the island. This is a huge island and there was no statement lighting here. So we've added these Porta Romana pendant lights, which I absolutely love. We've picked a beautiful gray silk that matches nicely with the joinery. And then behind me, this splashback previously was stone, um, but it wasn't the same stone as the worktop. It was a kind of clashing cream stone. So we knew that had to go. And we've replaced that with an antique mirror, which does a great job of bouncing light and making the space feel much more bright and airy. On the floor, you can see we've kept the same oak timber floor that we had upstairs on the ground floor. And it is quite a warm, oak it's a very sort of different color palette to the one that we usually use but i think this room can take it with all the cool colors of the joinery it's quite nice to have that contrast to add some warmth but then we've toned it down a little bit by adding lots of rugs so even in the kitchen you can see we've got this nice little runner rug in the cooking area this is an indoor outdoor rug so it's really practical if it gets any spillages you can just take it out into the garden give it a little hose down or a jet wash now today, sadly, we are having to film with all the blinds down because out there the garden is still being landscaped. We've even designed the garden for the clients as well because it wasn't quite how it needed to be. Normally we just do furniture, but here we took it a level further and we've done all the hard landscaping. So right now there's lots of um, landscape gardeners out there putting it all together and I didn't really want that on show for the video. But come over this way and I will show you the dining room. One of the biggest challenges we had on this lower ground floor was the space planning. It's quite an awkward layout. So right now I'm standing in the main dining area of this entire house. And you can see it's a really unusual layout in the fact that we've got two separate dining areas in quite a small space. Now the reason we've done that is because the family have some young children and not only do we need to maximize seating, but we needed to make sure that we created one dining space that was very elegant and glamorous, and one that was much more practical for everyday use. So I'll start with this area. We've done a gorgeous banquette that's custom made, and this has been templated to the exact shape of the bay window, so we made the most of every bit of space. And then in terms of the upholstery, we've done a faux leather, so it's nice and white clean. If the children get any sticky fingers on it, you don't need to panic. And then for the table, we've just gone for quite a simple but beautiful oak in a dark finish, um, so that it's very practical. Again, don't need to worry about staining. Now over behind me, this I would say was the biggest challenge of the entire project. For such a large and grand townhouse, this isn't the biggest dining area and this is their only dining area. So our client's main concern was making sure that we created a space that felt very elegant and luxurious and had as much seating as possible. So things we did to achieve that was, first of all, we took out some joinery that was previously here. It was a continuation of the same cabinetry that is in the kitchen. And whilst this space is open plan, I did want to separate it slightly and make this feel a bit more formal than if it was to have the same style cabinetry. That also allowed us to have a little bit more space to put in a longer table. And then visually, I've also made the space look bigger by putting a huge mirror wall behind. I know, groundbreaking mirror. But there's a couple of things we've done to make this a bit different. We've gone for an antiqued mirror and we've done it in a tile formation. So it's not too reflective. You don't instantly have to look at yourself as you're sort of eating your three course meal. Um, having that patina on the mirror really sort of diffuses it and makes it a bit more interesting. And then we've layered it. So we've got artwork in the middle, which is suspended from chains, which is an idea that we've used throughout this house. 
And we've also added wall lights that match the pendant lights above the island from Porta Romana. Again, it adds a lovely bit of warmth and it covers up some of that mirror. In terms of the space planning, one of my favorite tricks, if you're a channel regular, you'll know this by now, is I love to use banquette seating, particularly in a kitchen. Now it's not that normal for us to use it in a formal dining room, but obviously we're working under slightly different um, circumstances here where we're quite limited on space. So we've done quite an elegant elevated banquette. Rather than do it in a faux leather, for example, we've done it in a gorgeous performance velvet. And by adding that button detail, I think it really makes it feel a bit more classical and elevated as well. For the material palette, I've stuck to the same palette throughout this whole ground floor. When you have an open plan area, if you start adding in too many colors, it can quite quickly look messy. So I think by keeping a tonal palette throughout and then just changing certain elements of the design, it makes sure that it still feels cohesive and not too fussy. Um, so the rug really picks out all the colors that we've got throughout this floor. You can see it's got some gorgeous gray tones and it's got little flecks of red that you will also see in the stone. We've then brought those same colors up into the furnishings with these gorgeous performance fabric velvet chairs in the gray. And we've got a slightly warmer neutral for the banquette. And then we've picked out those touches of red onto the cushions. Um, so it feels really elegant, but it's also practical. We've now moved into the family room, which is towards the front of the lower ground floor. And I think this might be my favorite room in the whole house. I could really envisage myself lying on the sofa watching a movie. Things that we did in here to really elevate this space was, firstly, we removed some bifold doors that we had separating the kitchen from the family room. It really impaired the furniture layout that we could do. We wanted to maximize seating. That was one of our clients' main requests. They're a very big family. And if we hadn't removed them, we wouldn't have been able to put this big sofa. But we'd still wanted the space to have its own sort of zone and separation from the kitchen. So what we did instead was we added these gorgeous screens to separate the family room from the kitchen visually. These are from our collection with SWD, which is just launched. These are actually one of the very first screens we've done and they're in this gorgeous bronze metal color finish. And they just do a really good job of making the space feel separate, but still open at the same time. Other things that we changed in here, it was more of a soft decoration rather than a full refurbishment in this particular room. We retained all of the joinery, but we refinished it in a much darker color. Previously, this was that same orange tone that the floor is and together with the floor it felt a little bit too much of the same color so by toning it down to a darker color it feels a lot more luxurious. For the walls we wanted to add some texture and luxury so we did this beautiful soft baby blue grass cloth which tones really nicely with the joinery but makes it feel a little bit more luxurious in this part of the ground floor and then we brought that same color scheme in the same way that we did in the dining room onto all the furnishings with the cushions. We've got a combination of beautiful fabrics, different textures that all combine that same color palette of the soft blue with the burgundy red, which is a really unusual color palette. I haven't done this before, but I absolutely love how it turned out. In this room, I really wanted to make sure, as always, that there's lots of tables, lots of places for you to put your drink because it is a more informal area. You don't want to be sort of sat here in your best behavior. So we've got this gorgeous Giacometti coffee table from Porta Romana. This is one of my favorites. I've got the same table in my own living room at home and you can pick the metal finish so you can have a bronze or here we've done the antique brass or even a silver. And then we've laid that up with some sofa tables. These are our own design. And if you watched our golf projector, you might recognize these because they're the same table. We've designed them so that they can slide under the sofa and they're just perfect that if you're lounging on the sofa, you can easily put your snacks or your drink there. These are gonna be launching with Loom very soon. So watch this space, I'll let you know as soon as they become available. I absolutely love the design and this cute little clasp detail with the central section being stone. Feels very luxurious, but it really serves practical purpose, which is what I definitely always am looking for in furniture that we use. For the accessories, accessories of course make the room. And here we've done some really beautiful faux flowers. I love how these ones pick up the red tones and some of the fabrics. And then we've got lots of our Addison Ross collection. 
All of those finishing touches always make such a difference. The amount of times I have clients say to me, we don't want too many accessories. And then when they see the accessories go in, they're like, we love it, it makes such a difference. We want more of them. So my advice is never skimp on accessories. You need a lot more than you think. Another thing that we've done with this joinery is you can see we've got this big paddle down the center. This is a lot of m and &E is hidden behind there. We've got the air conditioning vent above and we knew that it would feel a bit too plain to just have it with the joinery. So we've added artwork by um, adding a rail with some chains the same way that we've done elsewhere in the property and added this gorgeous painting, which again we commissioned and it picks out all those gorgeous colors in the rest of the fabric scheme and it just lightens that whole elevation. With a seating plan, I always like to have seating on three sides of the room because it makes it much more sociable. You don't want to feel like you're all sitting in a row. So to balance the L-shaped sofa on the other side, here I've done a big oversized armchair in the corner. This is great as a little reading chair. And then here in front of the fireplace, I didn't want to block the view of the fire. And this is also a through route, so we haven't got a lot of space. In this case, these little stools were the perfect solution because they don't take up much space, but they just add some personality with this gorgeous fabric. This one's from Andrew Martin and also some additional seating if you're ever entertaining. Behind the sofa, we've gone for an oversized console table. This one is by Loom. And the reason why I've done a console table here is so that we could accessorize it and create some visual interest behind the sofa. I didn't just want to look straight onto the Roman blinds onto the window. So we've dressed that with these beautiful faux berries in the center, it brings out all those lovely red tones and it just breaks up the room from having too much symmetry, which can be a little bit overbearing sometimes. In part one, you would have seen the other primary bedroom that this property has. It's very unusual in the fact that it's got two equally sized primary bedrooms, each of which span almost the entire footprint of the house. This is the second primary bedroom and it's much more feminine. Where there were two of them, we wanted each one to have its own identity. This one we've gone for a much lighter color palette. The um, motifs on the wallpaper are much more elegant and faint. This is the Branches in the Breeze wallpaper from our Fremantle collection and I absolutely love the colour palette in this. It really inspired the colour scheme for the entire design scheme. We took the soft lilac tones onto a lot of the fabrics and then we combined that with soft celadon green so it created this really beautiful fresh colour palette. As with the other primary bedroom, we decided to take the same wall covering from the walls onto the front of the wardrobe doors and it makes the whole design scheme feel a lot more cohesive. The reason we did that was because in this sitting area part of the bedroom, there's actually two banks of wardrobes. So it would have broken up the wallpaper quite a lot and we thought it was a really nice feature to have that, those branches in the breeze continue across the wardrobes. This bank of wardrobes was existing and what we did was we refinished it we changed the doors, we've done the same design that we did in the other primary bedroom where we've got the bronze frame with the wall covering inset and then the grove handles from our Armac Martin collection. So over on this side of the room you can see we've done a new bank of wardrobes. These ones don't go all the way to the ceiling and the reason I've done that was the same reason for downstairs is so that I can put an LED strip on top of the wardrobes which throws a soft glow onto the ceiling and helps layer up all the lighting in here. In the centre of this part of the bedroom, we've created this very substantial seating area. This is almost like a mini apartment for our clients, so she can sit here, gather with her family members and relax in her own bedroom away from the rest of the house. A couple of things that I wanted to talk about that I've done differently in this room is I've brought some of the colour scheme onto the hard furnishings. This was a great find. The stone side table picks up that soft celadon green that we've got in a lot of the fabrics. A space planning trick that I wanted to share with you all was this idea that we did over this side of the room. Now we already had enough space for all the sitting area and so I wanted to carve out a little bit of space for a dressing table area. And this is a really nice thing to do because I often do it with console tables but it works equally well with a desk or a dressing table. You can have that behind and then when you dress it with a table lamp you get to appreciate that table lamp both from the sitting area and from the dressing table. I then layered it up with a mirror. Now, if you're gonna use a mirror 
on a table where it's going to be seen from behind. It's really important that you choose one that's got a nice back. This one from our R. Mac Martin collection is perfect because you can see it's got that hand finished solid brass back. A lot of them might have MDF at the back, which you wouldn't want to see. And then we've finished it off with a gorgeous little faux orchid. This house has had so many faux plants in it and it really helps bring it to life. Moving into the bedroom area, this felt like the perfect place to put the bed because you're around the corner, tucked out of sight, and it feels nice and quiet and private. The main feature of this area was this beautiful scallop-shaped headboard, which works so well with the layout of the branches of the breeze wallpaper. When we do a wallpaper like this, we always template the elevations and we show the shape of the headboard all to scale, so we make sure that all those branches perfectly curve around its shape, and that's how you get that really pleasing end result. For the headboard itself, we've gone for a combination of fabrics, the beautiful lilac mohair in the middle, and then this soft ivory velvet with some metallic trim that runs around the perimeter. For the bed itself, I've gone for three cushions, which is quite a standard thing that I would do in a primary bedroom. I tend to go for one different color in the middle and then a matching pair on the outside. And then we've dressed it with this gorgeous cashmere throw at the end. At the end of the bed, I've done a bench. This is a really great option to do if you need somewhere at the end of your bed to put all your cushions and your bedspreads when you get in, and it just really finishes off the bed area nicely. And then I've done this teeny tiny little coffee table. I do love an oval shape if you've got a small sitting area because it feels very soft and organic. You don't have to worry about hitting, kicking your shins on the edges of any sharp corners. And how pretty is this fur arrangement. I have to say our florist, who sadly I can't share because he's a trade secret, has done such a good job of matching all the colour schemes. As well as the bench, we've got this beautiful antique inspired armchair and I've just done a very simple rectangular cushion there, a nice reading light so you can sit there, pick a book from your shelves and have a little quiet moment and read a book. The shelves behind me were part of the original joinery that was in this property and we just refinished them, we painted the woodwork and we added some beautiful silk wall covering to the back of them just to really elevate the design and change the handles as well. The handles are from our Grove collection and they're the small T-bar version of the handles that we have in the wardrobes. Lastly, this is one of my favourite things we've done in this room. You need quite a big bedroom to be able to do this, but I really love this screen. We've covered it in a silk hand-printed fabric from Fortuny, and I thought it was a really good idea that if the client wanted to have some separation from the dressing area to the bedroom, this is a really versatile piece of furniture that you can spread it out, separate the two spaces a bit more, and in the meantime, it just looks really beautiful. I have to say, I think this is one of the prettiest bedrooms we've ever designed. I absolutely love it. Let me know in the comments if you agree. This is the smallest and the cutest bedroom in the house. It belongs to our client's daughter, who is between a baby and the toddler stage. And the brief from our client was that they wanted us to design a bedroom that would feel like a princess's bedroom, very special, very beautiful, but that would also grow with her right the way through her adolescence. So the starting point for our design scheme in here was the beautiful safari wallpaper from our collection with Fremontau. Our client had actually seen it on our Instagram. I've used the same wallpaper, but in a different color in my own daughter's bedroom. And we decided to use the pink here because we felt that this room where it was a lot smaller really needed as much personality and warmth as possible. What I love about this wallpaper and what really helps it transition is the fact that it initially appears quite sophisticated. It looks like a calming landscape. But when you look up close, you'll notice details like little groupings of animals, groupings of a family of elephants, for example, that are still really playful and help fuel the child's imagination. Of course, no princess bedroom is complete without a bed canopy, and I love this one. I think this is the perfect option in here because it's nice and compact and doesn't take up too much space. I didn't want to go for a full four poster in here, which would make the room feel smaller. This one is wall mounted, and you can see it really doesn't take up much space. It's almost just like a curtain with a gorgeous pelmet on top. 
and we've gone for two different colour fabrics with the dusty pink that matches with the wallpaper on the outside and then on the inside we've gone for this taupe with a pattern and I really love doing a pattern on the inside of a canopy it just adds that extra bit of detail that you wouldn't expect. For the bed I've gone for a French antique style headboard which is quite unexpected and I really love how it adds a lot of detail and then for the bedding itself you can see we've gone for this embroidered bed linen and we've picked out the colours of the fabric scheme with the tote border and the dusty pink. For dressing the beds I like to keep them quite simple in a kid's bedroom, not too many cushions, you know they're going to end up on the floor anyway. And how fun is this bolster cushion? I love how it's really chunky and oversized and the subtle leopard print's perfect with the wallpaper. I do love a bit of leopard print. I know it's quite divisive, but I'm a fan. And then for the bedside table, again, mixing up the styles, I decided to pick a mid-century style bedside table, which is quite unexpected with the French antique style bed, but I think it makes the interior feel a lot more layered. And then for dressing it, rather than doing a bedside table lamp, We've decided to keep all that surface area free so she's got space for all her books and do a wall light over here instead. And I think this one works really nicely. It's got these little leaf motifs. So it's referencing all that natural um, emblems that we've got in the wallpaper. In this corner, we've done a little reading chair so the little girl can sit here and read a nighttime story. And then above, quite controversial, but again, everyone's home is individual. The client wanted to have a TV in the room, so we've just done a wall-mounted TV. And then tucked behind the armchair, we've got this floor lamp, which again has a leaf motif, slightly different from the wall lamp, but I love how whimsical it is. For storage, there was no built-in wardrobes in this room. Obviously, storage is key in any room. So we designed this wardrobe to look like it was freestanding, but it's actually built in. I really love the bobbin trim detail, which again is adding some playfulness and then combined with the oversized handles, it's just a really nice detail. And then inside you can see we've done a double hanging rail, which is perfect for um, a small child's clothes, so you can maximise storage and then one of those can be taken out when she gets bigger. And we've also done integrated LED strip lighting so you can easily see everything inside. As you walk into this room, you walk through this quite narrow passageway. And so whilst I wanted to put some additional storage, I didn't want to do a big chest of drawers that would enclose the space even more. Instead, we've opted for this open shelving, which where it's open still gives the illusion of more space, but we've ensured it's practical for storage by giving the clients lots of wicker baskets. So their daughter can store all their toys in there. And the detail that I really like is this bobbin detail on the legs that references back to the bobbin detail on the wardrobes. We've dressed it with some nice accessories and how cute is this little lamp with the lattice work on the ceramic base and then the scalloped um, shade. I think that's so pretty. Really love that and it gives a nice soft glow. And then the last thing I'm going to talk about in here is this shell mirror. Again, it's got that scallop shape and the shells are referencing nature and it just feels really playful. Such a pretty room. For our last room of this entire project tour, we're back on the top floor, on the kids' floor, and I'm excited to show you this boys' bedroom. If you saw part one, you would have already seen the boys' bedroom next door. And where there are two kids' bedrooms up here, I wanted them to feel similar, but each have their own identity. So we've applied a lot of the same ideas, but in a different way with a different color palette. So come on in and I'll show you around. As with next door, we started with quite a bold patterned wallpaper. I really love this one because it's got lots of curves in it as well. And it's a nice neutral background, so it's kept the bedroom nice and bright. We then layered lots of art on top of that wallpaper. A lot of people can be very scared of putting artwork on top of patterned wallpaper, but I think the more the merrier. So we've used some really cute botanical prints. These work really well because they've got a big linen mount, so there's not too much going on next to the pattern of the wallpaper. And then over here in this corner, this was a really fun idea that I loved. This boy is really into cricket, so we thought let's mount some cricket bats on the wall. Hopefully he doesn't rip them off the wall and start hitting cricket um, balls in here, because that could be a disaster. And then we've done things like this playful mirror with the leather frame and this buckle strap detail. 
and it picks out the colours that we've got in the fabric scheme elsewhere. For all the kids' bedrooms, I've kept the bed dressing really simple with just one long bolster cushion. This one's got beautiful detailing. I love the fact that it's got a separate fabric on the front to the back and then this really gorgeous beaded trim, which is so pretty but not overly ornate for a kid's bedroom. Leather is a continuing theme that runs throughout this room. We've also done some buckle details on the headboard. I really love how this turned out. It feels quite sort of vintage, but playful at the same time. And again, the colors work really well with these burgundy tones that we have on the lampshades and the bedside tables. Then over on the other side of the room, we've got a matching chair that's also got leather. And I think leather's a really good option if you are designing a boys' room particularly because they're really easy to wipe clean. You know, boys can be quite messy, not to stereotype, but we all know it can be true, certainly with my son. So I really love how this works in the colour scheme. For the lighting, we've got lots of layers of light and lots of table lamps and wall lights. These ones are from Porta Romana. Again, I love that they're bringing a bit of playfulness to this bedroom, but not too childlike. And then for the bedside table lamps, we have these ones that have got a leather base that's picking up that leather materiality that we've got on the headboard. So I really like to have some interesting shapes and interesting materials in the lamps and go for something a bit unexpected. Moving on to this trunk, Storage is always key and I absolutely love these trunks. I've got them in both of my children's bedrooms. You can see on the front we have the um, monogram of the kids' initials, which is a really nice touch. And they're just so great for quick tidy ups of toys. In my own children's bedrooms, I store all their old baby clothes that I can't bear to part with. Um, but they're so usable. These ones are by Thomas May Bespoke and I'll put the link in the description box. This project has been dressed so well. Our client loves home accessories and it's been so nice for us to be able to showcase the power of styling and accessories. In this room, we've got lots of our Addison Ross collection. This particular photo frame works so well because it's got the leather and the bronze that picks up some of the other materials that we've got in the room. And we've also used a tray from the Shah Green collection. This is all faux Shah Green and it's great for putting on a chest of drawers and then dressing it with some books. That concludes the whole tour of this incredible townhouse that we've designed in London. I'd like to say a special thank you to our client for allowing us to share it with you. It's been such a privilege to show you around and have the opportunity to design such a special house. If you haven't hit subscribe, make sure you do. We've got lots more exciting content. We're finishing off a lot of projects this year that I can't wait to share with you. And also, if you are interested in our online design course, where I'm gonna be providing a lot more design tips, a lot more knowledge that I've built up over the whole duration of my career, then make sure you sign up to our mailing list to be the first to find out about it. Take care, I'll see you very soon.